Barbenheimer became a worldwide phenomenon. Both films equally set records in the genres and categories they fell into, and beyond their big initial openings, they have really kept their momentum in the weeks since July 21st. As an individual event, Barbenheimer became one of the biggest in theatrical history, and when two big films like this line up against each other, we normally don't see records as big as we saw here. But what can Hollywood learn from Barbenheimer? and what do I think they should take away from the success of both films. In this video, I'm going to be discussing just that and breaking down how both Oppenheimer and Barbie have changed the current movie-going landscape through their success. Before I get into it though, if you want to see more content on auteur-driven films like Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer and Greta Gerwig's Barbie, then don't forget to support this upload by giving it a like rating subscribing to the channel, and turning on your notifications. But without further ado, let's dive into Barbenheimer's success. So to date, both Oppenheimer and Barbie have nearly doubled expectations. Oppenheimer was projected around a 40 to 50 million dollar opening in the US and made 82 million dollars, and right now worldwide it sits on over 700 million dollars. It's tracking to make 900 million dollars by the end of its run, becoming Christopher Nolan's highest grossing original film and his third highest in history. For an R-rated three hour biopic with lots of talking, that is absolutely incredible, and in mentioning the R rating, by the time it ends in theatres, it will have become the second highest grossing R rated film at the box office, only behind Joker. On the flip side of things, Barbie made $152 million on its opening in the US, almost doubling the $90 million projections, and currently sits at $1.3 billion worldwide. Yes, it had more product recognition going for it, but in no way before it came out did we even think that Barbie would make as much as it has, or that the Barbenheimer phenomenon as a whole would pick up this much steam. Another element that makes things even crazier is that Oppenheimer had a production budget of around $100 million, and Barbie's was around $145 million. Big event films like this, or ones that are marketed as big event films, usually cost between 175 to 200 million or more to make, and as we've seen recently with projects like Fast X, Indiana Jones 5, and The Flash, they had massive budgets and ended up losing money. Both Barbie and Oppenheimer will end up making more than those three films, and pretty much every film released this year up until now. And that to me signals a big shift in the audience's appeal for event films. Barbenheimer in total has has made over $2 billion, and that signals more than just a random case of success for projects like these. Both have kept going and going, grossing more money each week, and dropping an average of only 30% per weekend. Most studio blockbusters, especially comic book films, have typical drops of 50-70%, to 70%, where most of the targeted audience turn up in weekend 1, and then if the film disappoints in quality, weekend 2 dips massively. But it can be argued that the quality of Barbie and Oppenheimer has taken it beyond their initial openings. I think part of this is to do with how Christopher Nolan and Greta Gerwig's latest films are original movies with weight. Going into Oppenheimer, I expected there to be weight and it to be quite different than Nolan's other event films because I read the book, and I do think that this really helped it. Not just with showcasing the quality, but then how that transferred over to the audience's reception with rewatchability. And that is quite insane for a biopic film. With Barbie, it was even more of a shock though, because we didn't expect it to have the weight that it did beyond being a colourful and joyful movie. I haven't posted my review for Greta Gerwig's film because I was immensely busy with covering Oppenheimer and finding the available time to put together content. But having now seen it, I loved what Greta Gerwig did. It had everything we expected in its colour and fun, but it went a step beyond, and that is mostly due to Greta Gerwig and her team. 
team. The performances had emotion at times, the production design and world building of Barbie World was unique, and the thematics of the piece really made it a film for everyone beyond its female driven audience. I think they did as much as they could with a Barbie film when it comes to giving a deeper narrative, and like Oppenheimer, it really is rewatchable because of both directors' influence. Right now, we're in a market where big event films, blockbusters, or comic book projects feel like more of the same. The same over the top approach to CGI, conventional storylines, and characters with not much depth. And this is translated into fewer box office returns. It isn't always the director's fault, and mostly it's the studio who wants to make more money, and they try to stick with what's working. But when you get these visionaries like Christopher Nolan or Greta Gerwig, who have an auteur style of how they use the camera and put together their films, it becomes very clear that there's more planning and better execution in the way these filmmakers work with the studio. It's a shame because we get loads of smaller, more interesting takes on genre films, and they never get the box office light that they deserve, and the audience only responds to the same stuff that they're given. But then when you have an example like Barbenheimer and the directorial driven quality that is put to screen, it makes you hopeful that unique takes on the event film are definitely ramping up. This brings me on to the next point, and that is letting directors make the movie they pitch. How many examples in recent years, especially in the blockbuster or comic book genre, have we heard directors come out and say that they were restricted by the studio in making the movie they wanted to put to screen? Now, in certain instances, it might be a good decision that the studio takes action, or that there's a deeper collaboration with them when it comes to altering the vision of the filmmaker. Zack Snyder's Justice League is probably the best example in recent times where things went wrong with the studio, and while some people love or hate his films, there was definitely a lot of changing on the part of the studio, which didn't work out well for their 2017 version. I thought Snyder's cut was way better, and it actually felt like a director was able to make most of what they envisioned. With Barbie and Oppenheimer, we got a case where two of the best filmmakers working today have complete control and can really build on the films with their collaborators to bring us projects that are visually and thematically unique. You see the trademarks of both filmmakers and on top of this, Nolan and Gerwig wrote or had a big part in the writing stages. They weren't just directors who were hired to make the films the studio put in place for them, they came to the studios and said these are the films we want to make and this is how we want to make them. So the message that I think we can learn from Barbenheimer is that directors should be able to fully realise the movies they pitch, and the studios greenlight these films based on those proposals. If it was the other way round, and Nolan or Gerwig didn't have the control they had, we wouldn't have got two great films from fascinating creatives. So overall, I hope that Barbenheimer has changed the industry for the better. Knowing Hollywood, I expect them to try and make numerous double features in the time ahead to capitalise on a similar level of success, but if they don't live up to the quality, or they don't have that vision behind it, it'll just become like another superhero franchise on the conveyor belt. If it is to be done with unique projects, then there needs to be much thought behind it and care put into the production, as there was equally on both Oppenheimer and Barbie. What I do hope is that both Warner Brothers and Universal look for these unique directorial voices, and if their pitches for films are great, then give them the control to make it. Minus, of course, they don't do anything wrong or over the top. Looking at event examples in recent years like Dune, The Batman, Joker, Barbie and Oppenheimer, it's showing that audiences want smarter, big budget films from directors who can translate their cinematic voices. They want films where you feel the individuality of it and how it expresses itself the way no other movie has in that genre. As a creative, it's hard to do that, but if you have the studio's backing, your idea is strong and you are a competent filmmaker, 
better, then there's a chance for more films of this quality or this level of anticipation being delivered on. Barbie and Oppenheimer aren't films that before release we thought could have the attention that they did. And because of their quality, because of the discussions they pose, and because of their event-like nature, audiences responded massively. But that was my video discussing the success of Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer and Greta Gerwig's Barbie. I think when it comes to big event films from known filmmakers like these, we should definitely be getting more intriguing deep dives and projects that feel more artistic. It's a testament to both Oppenheimer and Barbie with how well they've done and how the quality of each film has resulted in longevity at the box office. Yes, they both helped each other because of an online meme but both films quality really helped sustain that momentum over time. At the end of the day, I hope this can propel cinema and other great auteur films into more success, and I think Hollywood can look at these as examples for great directorial driven event cinema. But let me know down below in the comment section what your thoughts were towards Oppenheimer and Barbie, and whether you think it's a good and clear message to studios to make more films like this. For much more content on auteur-driven films like Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer and Greta Gerwig's Barbie, then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like rating and follow me on social media via the links in the description. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it, I've been Cortex, and as always, make some noise.